In the last video, we looked at how to create some very simple elevations uh, using a projection method. So we were projecting from our plan and projecting from our section to be able to create the shape, the general shape. And then we were using some elevations, which are just images. So we zoom in and we see that they're very pixelated. We're just using those as a reference um, for the style guide, if you like, of what we're trying to create. But we weren't using these as a direct trace reference because we can't actually pick up this information. Uh, what I want to do now is just show you how we can take this information and we want to add in some fills or hatching to be able to represent the materiality. I also talked about a shadow. Uh, they've got a drop shadow we see here and um, I might just show you how, to, how we could create that in a 2D way. It's sort of a silly way of working to be honest because uh, it's not real um, and when we use ArchiCAD of course we have the ability to do that properly which makes it a lot more beneficial but for now we're just going to keep it quite simple. Let's just take this straight through to clean that up. Alright, so how do we go about this? We need to understand which one we're talking about, which one we're using. Um, so what I'll do again is say show as trace reference just so we can see these. So we see here that this is mostly weatherboard. Uh, CFC, so maybe that's a compressed fiber cement board and around the, the garage door as well. And then the end of this is brick and the end of this nib is brick. And when we look at the other one, we might move this after, but we have a, a brick nib here. And then again, mostly weatherboard and uh, a compressed fiber cement panel. Could also be something like James Hardy Skyon Matrix or something like that. So we're going to represent these and we're gonna use the fill tool to do this. Now we don't have a lot of different options available for us. So let's just see what we have and go from there. So drafting fills, cover fills, uh, cut fills, and building materials. Generally, the further down this list we go, the less option, the the least options we have. The fewer options, uh, and once we get to the top, drafting fills. That's probably the the largest list we've got available to us. So what are we going to use first? Uh, let's use the brick, we're going to use the brick common bond and mortar to represent. This is going to be the the most detailed, let's say. And I'm just going to use the gray fill to represent this. We could add a background color if we want to, but I don't really want to do that in this case. Where was this applied to? Just this surface here. So while I showed this is dashed, it's actually a solid line. Now we could draw this. So we could draw this as a polygon and click on each of the corners. We could use the, I pressed escape then, we could use a two point box or we could, once we've created the shape, just use spacebar, which is our magic wand, and click. So we see that's going to create a brick pattern. Now, it's called brick commons, but we see that it's an interesting shape and it's probably a good um, brick pattern for a, a double brick but it's definitely not a good brick pattern for a cavity brick so the other one that we could change this to if we wanted it to be more uh, a standard bond would be the running bond now the one strange thing that may happen and this will definitely happen in this project based on the way it was done is our brick pattern doesn't necessarily line up with our building and that's awkward that doesn't look really nice and that's not generally what we want to create but as we've talked about previously, if you've watched my other videos of this project, is that it wasn't necessarily designed for brick dimensions. So how might we fix this? If we go into our fill settings, we have the ability to choose the layout and the position of our fill. So we see that that brings up a line, and that line defines the corner or the edge. And so I can define the edge, the corner, the junction, of my brick pattern. Now we have to be, be a little bit careful because once we do this it very much makes it hard to move it again without actually dragging the corner. So a better way of working just to be safe would be to not put it in a corner uh, but maybe put it on an edge 
and then maybe drag it away again if we want it to be a bit more precise. So I could say 120. And then the other way of doing that would be to take it down to the bottom and maybe add another 10 millimeters up so we do get a mortar joint at the bottom. So that's a way of working that out. So we see that this side and this side are actually much better. We see that this side doesn't work. Why? Because it's a silly length that isn't necessarily a brick dimension. Uh, and there's not much we can do about that without changing this project dramatically. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, what's next? The weatherboard. Let's just turn the trace reference on just so we see what we're trying to achieve again. So we see that there's a box around this, so we're going to join these up. Turn the trace back off. That's a better line. Let's use that one. Delete that. Delete that. All right. Uh, now, I don't have a fill that's going to give us that um, compressed fiber cement matrix look, but what I would recommend that we use is a percentage fill. Uh, so I'm going to use a 50% fill and I'm going to choose a, a gray, a mid gray. And the idea of a percentage fill, I can again use the magic wand to place it. And then this would allow me to 25%, make that lighter, 50% or 100%, make that darker. 75%. And then of course I could add in lines. So if I wanted then to represent that maybe this was broken up into a pattern, of course I could represent that maybe I want that to be based on this sort of a shape. So I'm not necessarily sticking to the pattern that they've used. I'm making up my own. And then maybe I'd offset that a 20 mil line. So I could create this as a fill, or I could use lines to do this. Because I'm making a pattern that's very spe specific to my building materials, uh, it's probably best to actually do this with lines. So it's representing a pattern. And then finally, I want to find one that I can use as a weatherboard. So something like this plank floor, just a, a horizontal fill. Now I don't want to be defined by this edge, so I'll just extend that. So that's giving me the result that I want. Now we could represent the glass if we wanted. Maybe we use the same sort of idea, so we do that as a 25%, and this time I choose a blue to represent the glass. Oops, sorry. So now we see that's how that works. Now let's add a little bit of detail. Uh, in terms of shadow, where is the sun coming from? If I'm going to cast a shadow, I need to be consistent and understand where that might be. So let's just draw a nice big red circle up here. Now, of course, the, the sun is a long, long way away, so it's not going to be cast as a perspective from that sun. In real life, it is, but the sun's so far away, we don't really perceive perspective. So in understanding what that means, we're going to cast this on a 45-degree angle. Hopefully that makes sense. What am I talking about? Let's just say move, mirror, a copy. So that's our sun. Yep, everyone cool with that? So what does that mean? Um, I need to choose a depth. I need to understand a depth. Now, what's projecting realistically only my uh, box windows are going to cast much of a, a projection or a shadow. So I'm going to use a fill or a line tool in order to be able to do this. Let's just make it very simple and start with the fill to begin with. Now, I'm going to use the black and I'm going to use 25%. Why? Because that's going to help to shade or to grade whatever else I've already created. So if it's consistent everywhere, I'm going to choose to offset this line. Let's do it 250 millimeters this direction. Now the other thing I'm going to do with this is turn off the overlay and set the background to transparent. And what that means, it's making the blue darker rather than creating a gray fill over the top of that. I'm going to do that in the other direction as well and now I'm going to add that to it. So plus and draw inside the box 250. 
So that already, hopefully, you would agree, makes it look like it's casting a shadow. Now, of course, there'd be a shadow cast outside this box as well, and that would be defined by the edge, and that would be projecting all the way down to the ground. I'm not quite sure what happened with our line. Obviously, I shouldn't have this all the way going all the way down, so I'm just going to do this for now. Alright, uh, that should go all the way down to the edge of the slab or all the way to the ground like this. Uh, but of course it would be cut at 45 degrees. So then I want to split, get rid of that, and then that's representing the way that shadow could work. Now, that just is consistent for the rest of it, so I could just copy both of those, drag a copy, now, why 45 degrees? Just because it's easy. It doesn't really matter. If I was trying to show a real shadow, I definitely wouldn't do it this way. It's too complicated. Uh, now, that's a little bit unfortunate, the fact that we've just got that small amount left. That would be a lot nicer if the brick went the whole way. So why don't I do that? Let's make that do that. Let's just delete these lines, and let's take this brick the whole way. I don't know if that works with this building, but I'm just playing. And let's continue this all the way through, and then stop this short. So we're just playing with fills. And then, of course, what happens here? Split, 45, delete, and then mirror a copy. So when we're doing 2D projection, it's relying a lot more on our ability to understand uh, what we should be seeing. Uh, when we do this in Archicad, Archicad will do a lot of this for us and it will give us sort of more real answers. Uh, but I, I think this is a very useful tool for us to be able to understand a process and how to create an effect without maybe um, having Archicad do it all for us. So while I, I wouldn't recommend that you use Archicad to do 2D drafting like I've been doing for the last few weeks, hopefully this process has helped to explain that Archicad still can copy AutoCAD. It can still work the same way and hopefully it's also been giving you a better understanding of what drafting is and how drafting can be created and even though Archicad may work in a certain way, it doesn't mean we're limited to working that way.